back to my channel if you're new here my name is Bailey and in today's video I am doing a little bit of a wolfing supplies haul video so as many of you know I do a ton of dog content on my channel I do breed golden doodles so we do have a litter coming up this summer we go next week to find out if Indy is pregnant and that will be in the next video but as of now we are pretty sure she's pregnant but we go for an ultrasound next week so we won't know for sure but I have been already preparing just to get ready for this upcoming litter because I didn't want to wait until we knew and then things not possibly come in or anything like that and then if she is not pregnant we can always use this for our next litters so I just wanted to hop on here and share with you guys some of the things that we use to whelp a litter of puppies this is definitely not all that we will use to whelp a litter of puppies but like a lot of things we still um, need, like we're going to get some puppy formula, some bottles just in case we need to formula feed puppies. Um, we'll make some liver water just in case for some puppies. But this is kind of like the actual like supplies things that you will need to whip litter puppies. Um, overall, there's definitely some things we could probably add and there's things that some people say is not necessary. But this is what we use here at Rosemary Doodles and I thought it would just be fun to share that with you guys. So yeah, if you're new here and you've never been to my channel before and you like my content, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below it means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my channel we did just hit 4,000 subscribers which is so exciting thank you guys so much for supporting my channel and for subscribing it literally is so awesome to see my channel grow and to see the type of content you guys like and just to see how far I've come from the first video that I posted on my channel to now it's just so fun and I just love you guys and thank you guys so much for 4,000 that is literally awesome can't wait now to get to 5,000 that is the goal now and I think we'll get there sooner than later so super excited also I always preface all of my videos with the um if you hear the noise the barking anything like that I normally don't stop I normally just keep going just because I have three dogs so it would just be too hard to stop and restart huh buddy and then Jagger's sitting right here, he likes to sit underneath my desk that you guys are sitting on. So if you start bumping around, probably because he hit the table, huh, buddy? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, like I said, this is a whelping supplies haul. I did get all of these things off of Amazon. There are some things that you cannot get off Amazon, but Amazon is always just so convenient. It literally comes in like three days and Amazon is my fave like I'm sure it is a bunch of yours so one of the main things you're going to need when whelping a litter of puppies is clearly a whelping box and a whelping box is a place that your female can go and feel safe and comfortable to have her puppies so last time we used a whelping box that my husband built out of wood and it just got dirty and wasn't really the most like efficient like it worked for that time around but this time we are purchasing this garden box off of Amazon right here and we are going to build some PVC pig rails and make that into a whelping box um a ton of breeders i know use those garden boxes they also have some on costco you can get for a whelping box and it's really convenient because it's like vinyl or yeah vinyl and you can like wipe it off so and you can like disinfect it and stuff like that whereas with wood it's really hard to do that so that is in my amazon cart right now i just have not purchased it and when i was ordering all this stuff that came a couple weeks ago i literally just completely forgot about that so that is in my cart to order um but yeah first thing you will need is a whelping box we like to normally when the female we found out she's pregnant we like to start setting the whelping box up around like two weeks before her due date so she can go in there start getting comfortable start realizing that that's a safe place for her to have her puppies um even then though you still might have a female that wants to go in a closet or in a certain area in your house and have puppies um if you can do your best to guide them to the whelping box just because you know that's the safest and most sanitized place for them to give birth but if not sometimes it just happens where it happens um but yeah first thing you'll definitely need is a whelping box okay so the next thing you're going to need is some whelping pads or some type of bottom slash flooring for your whelping box even if your whelping box does have like a floor on it you want to make sure that you get something that is really easy for the puppies to grip onto and walk onto so if it's like a slippery surface so say you build a whelping box and then you put like linoleum like a sheet of linoleum, linoleum flooring I cannot say that that you got from Lowe's you aren't going to want the puppies to be laying on that or to be walking on that because it's super slippery and it's really not good for their hips and their joints and stuff like that because they're still you know firming up when they're puppies so you definitely want to get some sort of well-being pad or um people use a bunch of different things but these are the ones that we use so they're from Amazon so this is the easy well washable puppy pad in a 47 by 47 we ordered a bunch of these um 
last go around and we have some of them still some of them have just been ruined but i love these they are the easy Wilt brand and they are a brand that sells like welding boxes and stuff like that but I really love these. They're washable. They're super awesome. And they fit really well in a 4x4 welping box, which is what we use. Now, I haven't tried these out yet. But I did see another breeder. I'm not sure what their name was. But she was using these. They are the washable puppy training and whelping pads. This one is a 65 by 48 So this one's a lot bigger. So I thought I could get one that fits right in. And then we'll fit um, one that's a little bigger. Just to have different options. Like when we go to move the puppies like out of the whelping box. Stuff like that. We might use these. But they are non-slip and waterproof. Um, and that you can wash them as well. So this one looks like this. And it definitely has like a different texture. I don't know if you can see that. So there's the texture of that one. And then you probably saw already, but this is the texture of this one. So both different, but both very good options. And I got two of each. And then besides that, we also have ones um, from Last Litter that we will be using as well. You can really never have too many whelping pads. Honestly, they get dirty so quickly. Um, especially when they're getting older and they're learning how to potty train and stuff like that. But for now, we just have, I think, like six or seven and we just wash them every day so yeah that is what we have and then as far as in the bottom of the whelping box as well you're going to want some sort of heat source to keep the puppies warm so keeping the puppies warm is probably the number one thing that you need to focus on for the first like two weeks of their lives because they're so fragile and literally just getting cold can easily kill a puppy so last time we used a heating lamp and we will not be doing that this time around just because it's kind of sketchy it's a little scary it could be a fire hazard um even though last time like when we were using it they were in our bedroom so still you just never know what can happen so this time we opted to use heating pads so we are going to be putting these in the whelping box or underneath the um whelping pads and using them i only have one so far i'm probably going to end up ordering another one when i order the whelping box because i don't think one is going to be good enough but this is the one we got just the sunbeam heating pad um really soft really um good quality and another breeder recommended this on her page i believe i believe it's bountiful doodles if i'm not mistaken um but she uses this one she said she really likes this one because it doesn't have like some of the heating pads you know you have to insert something into a cloth um and then puppies can get inside of that and get stuck but this one is completely like sewn fully around so your puppies aren't going to get in like underneath the cloth in the heating pad so really good thing to have either a heating pad or a heat lamp depending on your preference but We've used the heating lamp so far and we really liked it. It worked well, but it's also a little bit harder for mom to get out from underneath. And a lot of times you don't want your mom to get too hot because that's not good for her, but you need your puppies at a certain temperature. So this is good because she can just move off of the heating pad and the puppies can move on to where the um, warp is. So before I start on stuff that we are using, like when she's giving birth and stuff like that, I wanted to include this little cart. So I'm going to insert a picture of it right here because I was going to put it together for this video, but I am not the handy one in this relationship. Matt is, and he's at work right now. And I literally got it out of the box, got the instructions, and I just couldn't i just like no i'm not so that is what it looks like um but a lot of readers recommended using that because it was really easy to maneuver and bring the cart to the whelping area or move it somewhere else and last time we used just like a um plastic drawer um thing that you can get with like three different drawers and it was very hard to move if i needed it closer to me i couldn't get it there um you had to open and slide the drawers and these are like open drawers um or open shelving so it's really easier to kind of grab things last minute when you need it so i just didn't really like the like sliding plastic drawers last time so i got this and i'm really excited to use it this time around i think i'm really gonna like it so yeah that's that i did get that but like i said i have not put that together yet and then going along with um like we'll start with some things that you're gonna need or want for mom during delivery um so first thing is you're really gonna want to get some type of thermometer this is the one we have just a simple thermometer because you're going to want to be taking your mom's temperature around 
five days before her due date. So a dog's average temperature is around 101 to 102 degrees and right before delivery, around 24 hours before, you will see a huge significant drop in your mom's temperature to around 98 degrees. So that's how you know you're basically going to have puppies within the next 12 to 24 hours and that you should be prepared and really not take your eyes off your mom. So that is a reason that we utilize the thermometer. I had it the first go around with Indy. I literally was taking her temperature all the time, plus her heart constantly being like, oh my God, is our temperature dropped? Is it time? Is it time? So a thermometer is a great tool to have when you are really getting close to that due date and you want to make sure that you know when your female is going into active labor so you're not like off eating dinner and she's delivering puppies at home and you were unaware. Um, so yeah, really love that. So that is one of the things that you're definitely going to want to use for mom. So you're really going to want some sort of calcium supplement to give your female during labor. Um, I know a lot of people use Tums and yogurt and things like that. We did use some Tums during labor last time, but we just were really unprepared for how um, important it was. So this time we went ahead and got some of this Oral Cow Plus. So we are going to be administering this to her. I think Jeanette says like once before and once during. Um, so we have this for our calcium supplement, but like I said, you can use something like Tums or even yogurt. And then also we currently give Indy the Oxymate um, vitamins for her like prenatal care um, vitamin. And then once she delivers, we will be switching her to these Oxymommy Oxy mommy, <laughs> oxy mama postnatal vitamin. Uh, this is really good to, um, it says it supports lactation and recovery with multivitamins, herbs, and essential amino acids. Um, a lot of breeders we know really you, uh, love these and stand by these. Um, we did not use anything like this last pregnancy and Indy did great. She didn't have any issue with her milk coming in. The only thing she did have an issue with is she had a lot of postpartum like hair loss. She kind of blew her coat and we're hoping by using the prenatal and postnatal vitamins that will kind of help eliminate that. And then lastly for mom, at least in this um, haul, there's definitely a lot more things you need to be prepared to care for your dam during whelping and even post whelping. Post whelping is probably the most important time but that's not what this video is about. We have some, I'm going to butcher the name, sunflower, lit. I'm not even going to try to say it. This is what we have and this is to help prevent mastitis and stuff like that in females. Once again, we didn't use anything like this with Indy first go around, but we will be this time. Like we just have it on standby just to be careful um, because mastitis is really easy for females to get when they are nursing and you have to be really careful. Um, and then also besides this, we do like to use pumpkin in her food after labor and delivery just because they can have diarrhea for honestly about, some females get it like the whole post whelp um, raising their puppies, but Indy had it for about a couple days after she delivered. So we're gonna have some pumpkin in her food as well, post whelping, um, just to make sure she is getting all the nutrients and all the help she needs. Um, caring for your dam is one of the most important parts post whelp. So make sure you are prepared for um, her care as well as the puppy's care. Don't just forget about her once the puppies are born. Okay, now we can kind of go into the things you're going to need once puppies start arriving. So we like to have a sort of like, obviously a, well, one puppy pads. Get you a bunch of puppy pads because we like to use them throughout the entire labor and delivery. Um, we like to put them underneath Indy's bum while she's delivering, just so we're not constantly having to change that whelping pad out from underneath her. Um, Indy's last delivery was super quick. Literally, we had 10 puppies within three hours, so I wouldn't have had time to change that pad out. Like, literally the first hour, we had five puppies born, and it was barely enough time for me to get the next, um, like, a puppy pad underneath her and a lot of times she was standing as well so I just kind of positioned the puppy pad where a lot of the flu was going to come out of. Um, it's going to be messy, it's going to be dirty in general but have a lot of puppy pads on stand and then also we like to use these my microfiber cloths from Amazon so they come in like a huge pack. Um, they come with white, yellow, and blue. I don't have any of the um, blue ones on hand because I do have a new box that I have yet to open but I didn't want to open those just for this video but these are some of the ones I had left over from last time I did just toss them they get really gross like to me I guess you could wash them but they're like 20 bucks on Amazon so to me it's just worth to chuck them um then to like try to wash them and reuse them put all that nasty gunk in my washing machine so I love these they're like the perfect puppy size so this is how big they are so they're perfect like for you to have a little puppy in your hands and to be you know trying to rub them off clear their nasal pathways and stuff like that get the fluid out of their lungs so really love these you could also just get like 
dollar washcloths from Dollar Tree and Dollar General as well but I really love how exorbitant these are and I really loved using them the last time so we're going to continue to use these and then you might have heard that I mentioned, you know, you're going to want to clear their nasal pathway and get the fluid out of their lungs. And that is where this little guy comes into place. I don't even know what this thing is called, but you use it to go down the mouth of the puppy to kind of like suction the fluid out. Because a lot of times they'll have a lot of fluid in their lungs um, and also on their nose. Uh, or in their nose so we use these to clear their airways so this is definitely one of the most important things you want to do when a puppy is born is to start cleaning the fluid all like clean the sack off their face get the fluid out of their lungs and make sure they can take a really good breath and that they're not breathing and you can hear the liquid on them you want to make sure you get all of that out so that's what we use this for we had one that we used last litter um i still need to disinfect it but we've got two others came in a pack of three so we'll be using this one this go around and then also you're going to want to somehow cut and um, cut the umbilical cord for the puppy. A lot of times your mom will do that. And if you feel comfortable allowing your mom to do that, that is great. Um, sometimes Indy would do that. And sometimes she would be on to the next puppy because she literally, her delivery was so quick. So sometimes we would have to do that. So we've got these hemostats to like clamp the cord to stop the bleeding. And then just some good old medical scissors to cut the cord and then we like to tie it off with dental floss if necessary sometimes we need to sometimes we don't um so yeah these came in a, a pack from amazon as well and i still need to disinfect these um they've been washed but i really need to boil them um from last litter so these are also been really great to have on hand also we do have these iodine prep pads just in case you never know we like to kind of wipe the umbilical cord down with these as well um to kind of disinfect things make sure they're not getting anything in there and getting an infection so one of those things that you don't necessarily have to have but it's really good to have on standby for sure so lastly we're going to kind of move into things you're going to want for um after the puppy is born and once you know you're sitting there and most of your posts have been born the things you're going to want to get to so we always have a clipboard i don't have that with me here but we have a clipboard with all of our paperwork to start tracking like when the puppy was born what time they were born um the sex their um how we're identifying them any notes we need to make such as if they have a club palette or anything like that you're going to want to make sure all your paperwork is ready to go and then you're going to want to have some sort of identifying the puppies a lot of times you may have a colorful litter and not have to put like identification collars on your puppies but specifically for this upcoming litter with indy we are going to have puppies that probably all look basically the same so it's going to be very important to be able to identify those puppies so when we are tracking their weight for the following days to make sure they are gaining we know exactly like okay blue collar puppy was I don't know 14 ounces this day and they're 12 ounces the next day clearly they're not eating we need to be able to know those things so we can make sure all the puppies are getting enough milk and nutrients and that they are not like getting pushed to the side because that is quickly how a puppy will die so last litter for the first like two or three weeks before they fit into these other collars I'm going to show you guys we used ribbon and I really didn't like the way those worked they would come undone and they would fall off their neck really easily and it was just kind of a pain so this time we have got these little things because a lot of breeders recommended them they're just these little tie things look like this and we use are going to be using these for the first like two to three weeks of the puppy's lives to identify them so each puppy will get a different color and there is multiple hello hey hey i'm waiting now and have six bucks Alrighty, you interrupted my video oh my gosh <laughs> what's up youtube oh my god <laughs> all right well don't forget my ranch i need two ranch yeah, for my chicken tenders. I'm, I told the spicy chicken tenders. Want blue cheese? No, ew. Just get it, okay? All right. All right, love you. Bye. All right. Love you too, bye. All right, like I was saying, he's getting me Chick-fil-A. I'm so excited. Um, we use these. We can change them because they come with multiple. They don't just come with one. Um, so if they get dirty or anything like that. So we're going to be trying those out this time around. And I will tell you guys how I end up liking them. So once the puppies have moved out of those collars, we will move them into breakaway puppy collars. These are the ones we used last time. And I really liked them. They were really awesome. They come with a bunch of different colors. 
And like I said, they are breakaway. That's really important because you want to make sure that if puppies are fighting or they get stuck on something in the whelping box that they are able to get free and not like choke to death. So we really love these. I haven't like took the time to like look at these collars and see if the colors match up, but it's looking like they're going to match up really well. Yeah, there's like light blue, yellow. I don't see it. Yeah, there's an orange. Yep. So they're going to end up matching up really well and working out really well so really like the um breakaway collars for when they're like they fit them from like four weeks old all the way up to when they go home so really like those and lastly in this haul one of the last things that i use during the whole whelping and delivery thing and this is kind of afterwards or if puppies are coming at a slower rate and i feel like i have a really good amount of time in between puppies i will begin to weigh puppies once they are born this is the scale we are going to be using this go around just this digital pet scale from Amazon. So this is a scale we are going to be using this go around. We did use like a pet or a pet scale, a food scale from Walmart last go around and it was just too small. They would kind of roll off of it um, once they started walking around more. And this one is a lot bigger and gonna, it's going to be a lot more convenient for us to use. So I'm really excited about using this, but definitely important to have some sort of scale for the first two weeks to be weighing your puppies. For the first two weeks, you should really be weighing your puppies every single day to make sure they are gaining and and make sure that they are you know one's not getting left behind and that you don't need to maybe like let that puppy feed by itself so that is really important especially in bigger litters where you know there are going to be some competing for nipples so that is going to be all for this video once again I just want to say that this is definitely probably not all that I'm going to use and this is probably not all that you need to whelp a litter of puppies there are definitely things you can get that are going to be um helpful I know like everyone has their preference but this is kind of just like the base things that you're going to need just to whelp a litter of puppies period just the whelping process like there's so many other things I could include in this video that we use for our puppies and raising the puppies but this is just a fun video to show you guys what we ordered off Amazon to prepare for Indy's upcoming litter. We are so, so excited. So if you did enjoy this video or find it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button down below because you're not going to want to miss my next video, which is going to include us going to the vet and finding out if Indy is indeed pregnant. We are just so excited to find out. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.